Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name's Teresa and I'm the Car Boot Crafter. I'm coming on today because I'm in the craft room batch making cards. Um, and as I'm making them, I'm thinking, do you know, there's a few people I know who, who aren't into crafts but like to gift handmade cards. Wouldn't it be nice to make some of them for, for some friends? And then I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to pop them in a little gift box? Which is what I've come up with. So I thought I'll pop the cameras on and share how I'm making the cards and how I've made this cute little gift card, uh, gift box, sorry, that I'm going to gift to some of my non-crafty friends. So let me pop that to one side and I'll show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So I'm going to be using the Hummingbird collection, which I picked up from the works um and i absolutely adore it i think it's got mag um some gorgeous gorgeous papers in there so let me pop that to one side and i'll share all the measurements in the minutes um, and i'm using a uh, 300 gsm for my card base and um, this is from uh, jelly beans crafts um, and i love their cards it's really good so all i've done is taken an a4 sheet of paper and this one i've cut in half um on the shortest edge so i've got those two and then this one i've cut on the on the longer to make those ones so i've got tent cards and regular folded cards let me pop that out the way i'll need it in a minute but not just yet so my those two simply fold in half and you get either tent fold or a regular stand-up fold and this one which I've cut in half the other way you either get a, re a long regular card or a tall tent card like that so um, those are my bases and this is a I don't know whether you're gonna see that but it's a it's a very very dark navy blue for my base then you're going to need four mats because I'm going to make four cards um, and look how quick and simply this comes together. So four mats, which are 10 centimetres by 14 and a half centimetres. You'll also need 10 pieces of card or paper for your inserts. And these measure the same as your mats. So 10 centimetres by 14. And I've already stamped them for the inside of my cards. Then you're going to need four pieces of patterned paper, two of one and two of another, or you can have four different ones. It's entirely up to you. But these are going to measure nine and a half centimetres by 14 centimetres. Right, so let's pop those to one side. I'll pop the measurements down there for you while I then do the next bit. So this is when I'm going to bring in my guillotine. And what you're going to do is get two pieces, the contrasting papers, and pop them together. Now I want to chop off this corner here. So this is the direction of my paper. It doesn't matter if it's non-direction or you can do whichever works for you. But I want to have my cut off bit in this corner. So I'm going to turn it round so that the paper's facing me. And I'm just going to pop it in keeping those together, pop it into my trimmer and then by eye decide how much of this corner I want to cut off. So I'm going to go for that, a bigger piece this time I think, and chop it off. So we get that. I'm going to do the same with this one again. I'm going to make sure that they're both facing the same direction. Again, I want that bottom corner. So I'm just going to pop it in. If your trim will do all four at one go, then go ahead and do that. Um, but I don't think this one's going to do it. You pop them together because you want to make sure that you cut the same amount. Because we're going to do some swapsies. So I'm going to keep them together. I don't want to get them mixed up. <coughs> Whoops. So these two I'm going to do first. 
So I've got that and that. And all I'm going to do is swap those corners around like that. So let me get my mats. Let's pop that down there as well. So all I'm going to do is glue these onto one of my mats. So I've got my tacky glue. Very simply. And if you've got double-sided tape papers like this, you could, if they work, use the other side. So I could even use that side, couldn't I? But I'm going to stick with the um, the hummingbird side because I really like that pattern. And just pop it down on your patterns card as you would if you were doing a regular matted layer. And I always start off with the biggest one first. Let's move that down just a touch. Oh, bit too much. There we go. And then taking my um, other piece, my green bit, just going to glue that and stick that down in this corner, buffing it right up to that edge there like that. There we go. So it's nice and seamless. If your edges here are a little bit rough or they're not quite meeting, don't worry about it because we're going to pop a little bit of ribbon on that to cover that up. So I'm going to do the second one. Pop that on. Try and get that lined up. Nice and straight. Pop that down and then this one could go on as well. Just like that. Line it up. And then I'm going to leave those two to dry for a second. I'm going to do the other two. Again, just swapping those patterns over. And again, these are so quick. You can see how quickly this is coming together already. And you can then do what you want to decorate. This is the base, if you like. Um, I'm going to show you what I've done, which with a bit of ribbon and a topper. Uh, just a greetings, a birthday greeting topper. So that one, oh, too far over there. That's better. And then this one, and this paper, as you can see, if I turn that one round while it's drying, you can see it's absolutely stunning paper. It does the job for you. Um, I'm, I'm sure we've all got papers in our stash that you look at them and you think, I'd really like to use it, but it would be a shame to cover it up. And that's the thing with this, this paper. And then the green has got those gorgeous hummingbirds on as well, which although it's background paper, um, and you could use that to, you know, as background for, for anything, um, because it's such a gorgeous colour. It's again, it's a shame to cover up that gorgeous hummingbird. Pop the last one on like that. Bye bye. And then this one. There we go. And then. I have got myself some ribbon, which I've already cut. So this is about seven centimetres, this ribbon. And what I'm going to do is just pop it across like that. So I've got myself some double-sided tape. And I'm just tearing a piece off. So I'm holding it very steady, making sure it's covering over that, uh, that join. Fold it over your paper and pop the double-sided paper on there. Come back and double-check. Oh, I need to tear a little bit more off, don't I? 
double check that it's nice and straight like that roll it over hold it tight and pop your double type double sided tape on there and i have just peeping out just a little bit there so i'm just going to trim that off there we go and then i've got a piece which is a little bit shorter and i'm just going to tie that in a little knot um, if you wanted to do bows then by all means help yourself do bows but i quite like the knots so i'm just going to tidy that up on there and there and i'm going to do the rest the same so where's my tape gone there it is so two pieces of tape put that this seven inch piece on there and i'm rushing because as i probably said before my phone which i use to record my videos only records for um th roughly 30 minutes so i have half an hour to make four cards and a box <laughs> so it is always a little bit of a rush with some of these longer projects so what I'll do is I will tie the knots on afterwards um, just to give you the idea with the first one. So pop that on there, hold it over, put some tape on to hold it down, double check on this side, roll that over second one is so much easier to do than the first one whoops i say that and then it slips just checking that's still covering that and you know you don't have to you can leave it like that you don't have to put the knot or bow on it it is entirely up to you it's your project this is mine and i just choose to put the the knot on where i can so Pin that there with some double sided, double check that, roll it over and it will be at a, an angle but that's okay. So those therefore, those toppers done and I'm now going to glue them onto my base cards. So just I, mean, I always put a little bit on the ribbon as well, just as an extra hold for it. So all the way around, a little bit. The corners, I think, are what you, uh, what I concentrate on most, I think, um, when I'm put putting these together. So line that up like that. That's one. Let's grab another one. Um, and the nice thing with this double sided tape, normally I would take the tape off and expose the double sided glue underneath. But this is like a paper um, on this one. I don't know where I got it from, but it's like a paper so you can actually glue down the paper as well. So it's not, um, not a problem because some of them have got a really waxy. Uh, backing uh, uh, carrier sheet or carrier paper and um, they just um, don't glue very well right again concentrate on the corners and the edges uh, all the way around a little bit on the ribbon where it's exposed like that a little bit getting a little bit clogged up this glue but uh, hopefully we'll be fine pop that on 
there we go and fourth one again making sure I got my papers the my card base the right way round um, otherwise you end up with them opening on the skew if don't you and uh, look a little bit odd make it nice and pop that one on there like that move that up ever so slightly and there we go so there's our four cards Uh, and as I said, I've got my inserts as well. Now I like to just put the glue across the top of my inserts. Just a little bit like that. So that you've got a little bit of movement when it's opened. Uh, make sure we've got that lined up. There's one insert. And this one opens that way. So again i'm just putting a little bit you could if you want to this is nice thick um paper uh, it's not card it's um it's heavier than a copy weight uh, a copy paper um so it kind of it just sticks really nicely um so the glue doesn't actually show through if this was copy paper then i would use double sided tape to to stick these in because, uh, yeah, because glue would definitely show through. And last one. I hope I've put them all the right way. I've just realised I haven't looked properly. So let's pop that in like that. Oops. So, yep, there we go. So that one's the right way. That one is. So is that one. And that one and then all I've got to do for my cards then is I've got myself a little box which has got lots of <coughs> excuse me happy birthday uh, toppers on there they're just a very simple sentiment and all I'm going to do with these is decide where I want to pop them so I'm going to turn this one round to me so I can see and I could pop it down there but with the knot on there, it might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to pop it up there. So, yeah, if I pop that one down there, because I've got the knot on there, it's a little bit, little bit too much. So let's take the backing sheets off. Like that. I'm going to pop that one up there. So these are all going to be the same, I think. Um, the other um, ones that I did, because the paper was non-directional, I had one that uh, that went that way instead. Two, sorry, that went that way instead of that way. Um, and I just thought that was a bit more interest. So there's three. Where's my other one? Where's it gone? There it is. And I'll just pop that on as well. Like that. So now I've got my four cards done. I'm going to move on to my box. So let's move those out of the way. And like I said, I will do the... Um, what will I do? I will do the knots later. So now then, this one is for the box. So this piece... You need a piece of paper, and I've used the same um, the same paper as I've used for my base. So the uh, the very deep navy blue um, jelly bean card. So twenty six and a half centimeters by twenty centimeters. So I'll pop that there while I'm going through. Now you're going to on the long side. You're going to score at one and a half. Uh, again at 12 and a half and at 14 and then lastly at uh, 25 centimetres. Now these are all in centimetres so give them a good score. Then on the short side 
you're going to score at one and a half uh sorry i've got the wrong way round that way so one and a half three and all the way over at uh 18 and a half like that okay i've already scored them pre-scored um just because i didn't want to go over too much so once you've done all your scoring you can pop your scoreboard away and i'll leave that there so you can see <coughs> and what we're now going to do is start doing some cutting now this is the one i did when i was having a practice so you want your two um two scores so this is your one and a half line and your three centimeter line so you want those here and this is the way that you're going to cut it like that so let me grab my scissors and i'll show you exactly what i'm going to do so i'm going to start at the top here i'm going to start in this corner so i've got my two score lines here oops some glue stuck on there i've got my two score lines facing me so they're this end there and there I've got one centimetre here. I've got the middle gusset there, which is at 14 uh, and at 12 and a half. And then I've got my other one and a half centimetre line there. So starting this side, I'm going to cut all the way down to the second score line. So I'm going through the first one and stopping at that three centimetre score line. Once I've done that, I'm cutting chopping off that corner get rid of that don't need it and then i'm just going to because we want to make this square into a tab just cutting off those two corners like that and i'm coming across here and this first one here so i've got a line here and a line there i'm going to cut down And then I'm coming across to the second one and I'm cutting down. And then again, I'm cutting off that first, that top square. So we end up with that. We're making this tab. And again, I'm going to angle in so that those tabs are nice and simple and straight. And then let's get rid of that. And then because this is going to be the lip of the box that tucks in we want to make that a little bit thinner so i've got my first score line there my second score line there and i'm going to angle this corner but only to the first score line like that and the same on this side like that so I've only angled the top bit for the first score line, okay? And then I can get rid of all of this here. So going down to my second score line, my three centimetre score line, and I'm just going to cut all the way along that and get rid of it because we don't need that. Okay. So that's gone. So we end up with our top looking like that. Okay. And now I'm going to turn it all the way round. And I'm going to work on this bit. So where you've only got the one and a half centimetre score line. Okay. And again, this corner. So this one here, we're going to just get rid of. So just cut down and the the score marks to the first uh score and uh get rid of that corner like that then again we want another tab down here so again either side of these two score lines and then once we've freed that we're going to angle in like that and that if you're used to making boxes you'll um, completely understand where, where I'm coming from with these little tabs so again we're going to work on this corner and again we want this to be a tab 
So we're going to cut down that score line, if I can see. So there we go. And again, angle in on both sides like that. And that is our box cut out. I pop that on top. You can see exactly the same cut out. So I'll leave that there for a second. And all I'm going to do now is fold over on all the creases. I've already put some double sided tape on those two um, just to save a little bit of time. Um, because um, I don't want to run out of time making the box. So again, you can use, um, I would normally use um, uh, glue, wet glue um, on my boxes just because it, they last, it lasts a little bit longer and I want these to last. But also um, <coughs> because um, for quickness I've done this uh, using the double sided tape, I might actually grab my glue and put a little bit of glue on as well. So there's one and two. And I put it on this side because this, if you don't forget, will be the front of our box. This is the back. Come on, you know you want to. There we go. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there as well. Just hopefully to uh, keep things in place. So I'm going to fold in these two bottom tabs. So this is just the one, um, one and a half centimetre line. So I'm folding those two in, folding this one in. I'm going to bring it over and line everything up nicely on there. Making nice sharp corners on those edges. And the same on this one. Let's fold that over like that, and we end up with a nice size box for our um, for our cards. So, as I said, that uh, that side is your um, front. So this side is your front. So when you do fold it over, you want a nice clean edge on the front. If you do it the other way round, you get that and it can be a little bit jarring. So always make sure that you think of that when you're folding your box over. So it looks a little bit plain at the moment. So I'm going to bring in some more patterned paper. So this is for your box. So um, as you can see, I've already decorated it up. So because it's, it's your own choice, really, isn't it? So you'll need some patterned paper and I've gone with the green again so um, that is 10 centimeters by 14 and a half centimeters um, and then decorate it as you will I've stuck with the sort of purple and green theme so <coughs> as I was um, cutting my pieces um, for my um, not for my box for my um, gosh for my toppers I um, had some bits left over so I've used some of the bits on there a little bit of the pur same purple ribbon as I've got uh, on the cards and uh, yeah just decorated it up like that you'll also need two pieces which are one centimeter by um, 15 centimeters and these go down the side so these are really optional um, if you don't want to decorate the sides then don't so let's pop that on there and then do the other side as well there we go and then last piece you need is ten and a half centimeters by one centimeter and that's going to go on the top. So I'm just going to fold those two in, fold this in, and that bit. 
I'm going to glue on the very top just to finish it off and make it look um, handmade rather than homemade. There we go, a little bit more of a professional finish. And that's my box done. And if I grab my um, cards, you can see we can pop them in. Hopefully these are nice and dry now. And they just pop in beautifully like that. Fold that over. Um, what I've done on the other one is I've taken my hole punch. Let's do it on this while we've got a little bit. If we run out of time and I suddenly stop, then I do apologise. But um, that's everything now. I'm just titillating, as my mum would say. Now, so just going to get my little hole punch. Uh, well, little, this is uh, an inch and a half. I'm just going to pop it in there and by eye it and pop out just a tiny little thumb notch like that. Pop those back in there so that when you fold the box over, you've got that little notch there to help you to, uh, to open the box. So we get those cards out and finish knotting them. Um, so that you can see they're all done. So that one's done. Let's grab these. And I'm just going to thread that under there. What I might do is come back in with some um, glue dots. Just to hold the knots in place. So that it doesn't come undone. And then we end up losing it. So there's one. And two. Cut on an angle. If you've got thicker ribbon, um, then you might want to do some of the, um, you know, where you kind of get the, the zigzag look on it. But uh, I'm just going to do the, the knot with a simple uh, angle on there like that. Well, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed it. I hope you like these. I'm going to be doing a few more. Because um, it's a great way to use up your scraps if you want to, but also if you're batch making, you can do a few extra and uh, you end up with gifts for family and friends. So there we go, all done. Whoops, at an angle, that one. That's all done. My A gift made for somebody in less than half an hour which I think can't be bad when you're batch making. So there we go. I'll pop all the measurements, although the measurements have been on here. I'll pop them all in the description box below. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to check those out. So can't be bad. A gift for someone, four cards and a box, all in half an hour. Phew, I think I might go and lie down in a dark room now. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see